and welcome back to another thrilling episode of Lumberjack Bar. Today, what we're going to do for you is show you how to make pierogies. I'm not talking about pierogies out of a box, out of the freezer. I'm talking about homemade pierogi. So the recipe calls for, on your right, is the filling. And that would be uh, a, a cup and a half of onion, diced onions. That's going to be uh, in your filling. Notwithstanding, you could take another uh, onion, cut it up, and put it in butter, and then mix the pierogi after the boil into that. We'll get to that later on. Then that's what we're going to probably do. We'll see. We might just boil them and then do it tomorrow for Easter. Uh, three large potatoes. We don't have large potatoes here, so we went with five. Ricotta cheese. Farmer's cheese is what it calls for, but this is good enough, I'm told. Some pepper. Some butter. Uh... Then for the dough, I'm sorry, some butter and salt over here with the filling. The dough is some salt, flour, you got a cup of warm water, and two eggs. Now, uh, yeah, dough, that's, that's Mrs. Lumberjack. She's going to be taking over that portion of it. I mean, I probably could be all right if she guided me, but, you know, why not let a professional do that? Uh, this part is easy enough. We're going to... Uh, See if I can accomplish that. I have made these before, but I never made it in the video. So let's see what happens. And this sometimes can do a better job. Just try to rinse them off. And there we go. Good enough. So, a little bit quicker. We're going to have them. And put them in the old pot over there. I already have some water in it. And that'll be that. We'll get these potatoes nice and softened up. And blah, blah, blah. So we're going to turn it up on high for right now and uh, get them going. And you just want to do this so they're fork tender is what I understand. And that should be that. Bring to a boil and let it simmer for about 30 minutes until they're fork tender. Alright, so what we have here is four cups of flour, correct? Yes. And how much salt? Half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of salt, and just gonna, I guess, combine that is the terminology. Mm -hmm. All right. Mix them together. Two eggs coming right up. Thank you. Surely. Wash my hands. Here. A cup of water. Just make sure that. We'll go with a little, a little less light. because sometimes... You can always add, right? Yeah, if you add too much, then that becomes a sticky mess. All right. Mm-hmm. a whisk. I like to make a little well. That's a deep subject. Okay, so we have a little bit of time here. And... It's always a search for utensils because we I have. Like using a... Oh, I don't know. She uses a rubber spatula, folks. I like spatulas. And we're looking for kind of a consistency of almost like a pizza dough, I would guess, right? Mm. Like yeah, a ball, right? Ish. Yeah, let's see. I didn't pack. Meanwhile, our potatoes are. Uh, Getting ready to do the boiling thing over there. So I cut up the two onions in the quarters, put one of the onions in here. It didn't seem like there was a ton of room. Kind of interspersed them amongst the blades. I've never operated this equipment before, but I'm figuring if I can work, you know, like You'll be all equipment. right. Okay. Whoa, see, I wasn't all right. You got to hold on to this thing? That looks pretty good. So we got four tablespoons of butter back in this skillet back here operating and then there's our onions and this consistency is pretty good because it's going to go in a filling you don't want to be biting into large pieces of onion i'm hoping there's not any in there it looks like we got it all down it looks uh about like it's supposed to look uh one of these rubber spatula deal is is probably ideal for getting everything out mm, nice good idea i add flour to the bowl and then i just knead it in here like okay i say for a minute we are told to put it out in the table in a round bowl, but we're just going to leave it in the bowl and cover it with plastic wrap. 
I guess loosely is what I thought I heard. And right, right, I couldn't say loosely, so good enough. And then let that see. sit for about 15 minutes. Oh yeah, that's right. 10 to 15 minutes, let it sit. Fork tender. Some of them are splitting apart even too. But there you go. Fork goes in, potato comes off. Ready to go, we're gonna drain them out and then let them cool so that I can uh, peel them. So the onions are now at the perfect consistency. I just took a little sampling and they kind of melt in your mouth. But there's still some structure to them. So I turn off the heat. They got a little brown there. And we're gonna take them off the heat and let that cool down. So we're uh, taking the skins off. They're a little bit warm, but I'm able to handle them. And we're ready to uh, add the remaining ingredients. Uh, one of the ingredients, let me do this right handed and over the sink so I don't put all the pepper in there. Quarter teaspoon of pepper, half a teaspoon of salt. Why am I holding on to that still? So there's one half of one half. There we go. Rice them is what they say. If you got a rice or go for it. And it kind of, I guess, rices them ish. So I think we'll add our onions, which I can touch the pan with my hand, so they're definitely not hot, just warm. We'll work that in and then get the ricotta cheese in and then let this cool down because I don't want to put a uh, hot filling into the dough. I think it wouldn't be advantageous to do that. Just kind of move the onions around a little bit and then kind of mix them in with the potatoes. Go underneath the bottom and kind of scrape things around. It smells really good. Then I guess we're having lasagna this week because we're going to have another 24 ounces left over. So lucky me. And a little bit more. That looks good, right? Yep. Okay. Into the pan. After this, all we have left to do is to actually fill the pierogi and uh, boil them. There we go. A little perspective back here. That's how far it's rolled out. And the last time we made these last year, we had them a little too thick. And I think them right now they're at about eh, about five thirty seconds is where they're at. And I think I want to go just a little bit thinner, not too much, but a little bit, maybe to kind of get it closer to an eighth of an inch. I'm a machinist, so I'm pretty decent at judging thicknesses, especially. I think that's pretty good. You got edges down here, they're very close to an eighth of an inch. So uh, open there, but we ain't gonna go all the way out to, oh, I had to that, all the way out to the corners. A little flour on the rim of your glass. And then Wriggle around and boom. That looks pretty good. All right, so you take one of these here, whichever one, and they shrink. So now you gotta sit there and kind of like a pizza, pull on the end and stretch it out. I'll even go like that and that. And it's all just a learning kind of thing. Take yourself a scoop of the filling, I guess about like that. And you try not to get it on the edges because it, it won't seal as good. Get it in the center, trying to get too much on your hands. Take the center, fold it up like that and pinch it. And then I kind of like go like that to kind of move the filling out towards the end and then pinch it off going down that way. This is just for starters. If you got some filling coming out, you poke it down in. And now the pinch twist, finger under, thumb over and you twist 
and just to seal all that off you get something like that eh, you just pinch and twist again the more you work there the harder it is though so you got to try to just like work it as little as possible they don't look like mrs t's or nothing like that but they do look like my grandmoms as far as uh, the kind of shape of them and everything and yeah that's what we got so far what's that four times three is 12 13 juniors working on one and we got some boiling water over there all right so we got 13 pierogies we're going to start off our first batch and just dunk them in there just like frozen pierogies when they start floating you're good to go so uh it's getting busy in here Junior is over here helping fill pierogies. And here's what we're doing. As soon as we get a couple of them, this happens to be a half a dozen in the water. Once they're floating, these will come out that are over in here. Just kind of getting lightly sauteed in the butter. Not even really sauteed. Just getting some butter on them so that when we put them into the crock pot, hopefully they won't stick overnight. How about this one? And that's probably the best looking one we have, to be quite honest with you. And you can see we've already had a couple that fell apart. Uh, let's try it out. It seems like it's the consistency it should be. I know the dough seemed thinner. Well, only one way to find out. It is definitely thinner than it was before, that's for sure. And I think that was a good move that Mrs. Lumberjack came up with using that uh, chopper for the onions because it's really mixed in with the potatoes. Mm. Certainly not as good as my grandma, but better than store-bought. I love the taste of that dough. That's really good. It's way different than when you buy it uh, at the store with the frozen ones or whatever. Even the ones that aren't frozen, I don't like them as much as this. So, um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this, give us a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, share, and we'll see you next time on Lumberjack Barbecue. Peace!